However, like I said, if you had lots and lots of data, a better way to do it, and this has been covered in the blogs and in the forums variously, what you want to do is create a module. Um, and so what I've done here is I've created a file, which within the file, it creates a table called my data. It's an empty table. And then on that table, I add two fields, one called last seen and another one called count, which is basically the same thing we were doing previously. And then, at the very end of the file, I return a reference to this table, my data. So the way we use this is if you look at scene8.lua in this example, you'll see at the very top that I have required scripts.mydata, which is where that file uh, lives in this example. And I assign what it returns to a variable which I just call my data. I could call it anything, but I've chosen in this case to call it my data. Uh, similarly, if you look at scene 9, it's going to have the same thing at the top. So scene 8 and scene 9 for this example both have a reference to my data. I'm going to reload the project. And let's go down here and look at the will enter. Uh, let's see. Did, did enter, I'm sorry. So in the create, again, I set up the labels. And then the did enter, this time what I do is I just directly access my data, which was required at the top of the file, and I uh, append that to last seen. So in other words, the label uh, text that I was creating. And then further down, what I do, and I'll expand this, you can compare the two side by side. Simply I assign scene number to my data dot last scene, and here I increment the count by saying my data dot count equals my data dot count plus one. So the critical thing for people to understand here is that by putting this into a module and then requiring it at the top of the file, this file has access to that table even though it lives somewhere else. And C9 also has access to that table even though it lives somewhere else. So the module itself is loaded into memory, it stays there forever unless we purposely unload it. And then any scene, any file can require this table, or that is, require the file and get a reference to the table, and then everybody can access it. It's a, it this is a much more powerful way, in general, within Lua, to share data across files. And so that's why they suggested in the blogs. So I'll run this example, but it's, it's not very exciting. It basically does the same thing. Scene 8. The initial values were minus 1 and 0. That's what we're seeing. I go to scene 9. Scene 8, set this to 8. So this is now 8. Last scene is 8. And the count is 1. And we just go back and forth. And the counter increments every time, showing us that they are, in fact, both accessing the same table. And I said that I would expand this and compare them side by side. So originally, we use set variable and get variable to do this. Let's do this side by side. That'd be nice. So with the get and set, this is what we have. Get, modify, and set. Or we could just access the variables directly from our reference to the table, which is what I prefer to do. Yeah, which is a much more universal way of being able to work with uh, data as opposed to being, I mean, it's not really composer specific. It's just it's just a, a universal way of being able to do, right. to do that. Yeah, actually, I found myself when making these examples, um, people asked a question. They said, well, within the context of composer, I said, yeah, yeah, there's a way to do that in composer. But oftentimes, there's another way to do it that might be better. And in this case, I would suggest people use modules because it is, in fact, better, again, for large amounts of data or data that has to be shared between composer scenes and other parts of your game or app. It's a more universal way of approaching it.